all right guys guess what finally got that motor in well not technically speaking in but we got it in uh, and right now we're gonna do a quick troubleshooting just to see if it was the motor the controller or something else in the ski so uh, I'm not gonna drag you through all the BS of going through all the wiring again because you guys have already seen that I'm gonna do a quick run through quick test I just hooked up the new controller uh, that's still the old motor that's hooked up so we're gonna see if that still does what it did uh, if it does then we know either it was the motor or something else in the ski because the controller would be the same thing if it does not then we know that it was the motor so let me go ahead and check this and see what happens let's go ahead and plug on our lanyard all right power power uh, cycles Yep, doing the same thing. So, again, we know that the controller's good. Motor's got a flat spot, like I said before, or something else electrical that's screwing up somehow or another. All right, so here you see that the uh, new motor is installed. Uh, we did do one of these little channel bridges or whatever they're called, because with the diagnosing and all that, we gotta make sure that I can connect and disconnect. While the waterproof idea was great, Unfortunately, we need to be able to, to diagnose this thing if something happens, so that's why that's there. Anyhow, new motor's hooked up. Let's put the lanyard on. Yeah, let's hook up the power. That'd help. All right. Cycled. Let's see what the motor does. Hey, look at that. I think we found our problem. It was the motor the whole time, like I figured. Again, uh, somebody did comment and say something about having three speeds. Uh, this particular motor here, even though it's the same thing, was labeled as it having three speeds uh, on one of the plugs here. Yeah, right there, if you can see it. I don't know if you can see that or not. Anyhow, it says three speeds, so i got to go through and figure out what the fastest one is. We're going to get that hooked up uh, after doing so. Uh, next available chance, we're going to be on the lake. I'll get this motor swapped out. And uh, we'll see if she's worthy or not. All right, guys, it is a new day. The new motor's in along with the controllers. Everything's wired up and working. As you can see, I can hit it. It works perfect. Um, but before we head to the lake today, I want to talk about expectations. And here's what I mean by that. So I don't expect this to perform a whole lot better than what we've already saw, only because I think we're really limited in RPMs. I don't really think in the water it's going to get up to 4,500 RPMs. I just don't. Um, and whether or not the jet pump rebuild and it, it made it better, and if the old motor was bad from the get-go, I don't know. We're going to find out. But here's the thing. So the only way you're really going to get this thing to go faster is to use bigger batteries and or a bigger motor. And when you start talking about stuff like that, you start talking about a lot more money. Uh, whether it be using uh, electric bike motors and some of the other options that are out there, um, you start talking about water cooling because you can no longer air cool. You need to be able to water cool a lot bigger motor. So then you're talking, well, how do you water cool a motor that's really not supposed to get wet? And then you're talking batteries. Well, you got the chance of electrocution now if you're going over that 48 volts. So is it worth it? That I don't know. And without having a huge budget, you know, it's it's pro it's not probable. So we're going to see what this thing does on the water today. I'm going to bring you with me. And we'll do a rundown uh, as to whether it was worth it or not. Um, and the cost involved in it. And uh, that's pretty much it. So stick around. We're going to head to the lake and I'll see you out there. One hour later. Alright guys, at the lake again. Uh, doesn't really look like the most fantastic day to be at a lake. But... That means that we're not contending with anybody. So we're out here all alone. I can sit in the dock. I don't have to worry about pulling out or none of that. Um, so first thing we did, uh, common sense. We had to make sure that the uh, drain plugs are in the turb ski there. Drain plugs are obviously in the ski we're bringing out. Uh, pulling off the straps. And then we're gonna back her in and we're gonna make sure she ain't taking on no water. And then uh, we're gonna bring her out, see what she does. Guys, power's on. Uh, we're in the water. So far, I don't see any water coming in. We're still good there. Uh, we did bring the battle axe, aka the uh, uh, well, I guess the thing that's going to save us, I guess, if this thing doesn't work with the ore. Um, so what we're about to do now is I'm going to stay docked here. I'm just going to leave it here again. Nobody's out here, so I ain't really too concerned about it. 
Um, we're going to bring it out and see if we can get over 4.5 miles an hour. Stay tuned. Tell the truth. Let's see what she does. We're going to take off for the first time. <laughs> well, we got 4.5. I guess that's better than 4.4. Still no speed demon. 4.6. And really... We're moving okay. It's really not that bad. Actually, it feels okay. Maybe because it's glass water out. Uh, again, you know, nothing you're going to be uh, hopping waves on. Definitely a cool project. It, it definitely has, after rebuilding that pump, it has a lot more uh, response, I guess you could say. It doesn't take so long to get up to that four and a half mi miles an hour. So, still not real impressive. Man, I tell you, we're not moving bad. Look how far away from the dock we are already. So, well, we know what it does now. Like I said, I mean, it's the same speed, 4.6 miles an hour, slight, slight up with rebuilding that jet pump, but figure you're gonna five mile an hour vehicle if you build this thing. So uh, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna load back up. We're gonna go back and we're gonna talk a little bit about, again, costs of getting this thing going. Was it worth it? Uh, and who this thing is really made for. All right, guys, well, rather than driving home and going over this stuff, I figured why not just do it here at the lake since nobody's here. Uh, we're not really bothering anybody. Um, total cost to build this thing, roughly 540 bucks. That's obviously not including the second motor that I bought, uh, which was partially warrantied out, call it what you will. Um, remember, that's also, the ski was free, so the ski cost me nothing, so that's something to keep in mind as well. If you, know, if you have one of these things laying around, that's really a better reason to build this thing. I wouldn't go out and buy a ski unless it was stupid cheap and or maybe you can get some parts out of the thing to recover some of the costs. Um, Who is it for? Uh, like we talked before, this would be great for if you got kids or grandkids, you wanna put them on the lake uh, or you wanna put them on your own little pond let them cruise around and get used to riding one of these things because it actually was wasn't as bad as I thought, even though the speed wasn't there. Uh, once it was going, it was pretty smooth, at least on glass water. And it was, you know, I can see a kid having a lot of fun doing this. Uh, or again, if you're you're out there fishing, uh, great troller. I mean, this thing, it's pretty smooth, even though it's a smaller hull. It's not the most stable hull in the world. Uh, it, it'd be great to fish off of a heck of a lot better than a kayak, in my personal opinion. So I think that'd be a fantastic build, a reason to build that. Uh, but again, you know, if you're trying to get out here and you know jump waves and stuff that you're obviously not going to do that you ain't going to jump a wave even if the wave knocked you over so uh let's be realistic there but um it was fun like i said and it would under the 600 hundred dollar price point it was worth it to me it was something to do i got to get out here and show you guys something that somebody else isn't or nobody else is really seeming to do uh there's a few different people out there that have commented talking about using different engines like forklift motors and uh, electric brakes and statin motors. I don't know what else to do with it. Uh, but I will tell you that uh, if you guys have suggestions, by all means, feel free to send them in. We'll work on other things if you want to do that. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it. So uh, end all beat all, out of pocket, uh, let's say 550 bucks, um, a few days worth of work, and uh, four and a half miles an hour, good cruiser. That's what you get out of this. So just kind of understand that. Um, I had fun doing it with you guys. If you guys, again, have questions, feel free to give me a ring. Let me know. Uh, throw some messages out. And if you haven't already, please subscribe. Uh, we'll be doing more cool builds. Uh, I also take suggestions into effect. I mean, uh, you know, if you guys got cool ideas, I don't have a problem with spending some money and building those things. So feel free to comment. Tell me if you liked it if you didn't. And uh, if you have other ideas, please subscribe. Thanks again.